here. Chubb. Down inside. With the silent count. He bails out of the pocket there. And oh, Josh Hallers. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of the JWB Dynasty Digest where we give you a consumable dynasty perspective. He's Skyler, I'm Wyatt, and today we are joined by the newest member of the JWB team family. He's going to be doing some sleeper articles for us that you'll be being able to see on Fridays. You can find him on Twitter at JakePerry34. Jake, how are you doing? I'm good. Thanks for having me, guys. Pleasure to have you here. How are you feeling today? Uh, it's been a long day, so I'm uh, happy to finally be able to talk some football. <laughs> nice little reprieve from the work week, I bet. Now, for all of our guests, we like to do a little would you rather personalized to them. All now, right. Jake, you are a Chicago sports fan, is that correct? That is correct. Bears and Cubs, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so here we go. One of them, whichever one you want, We'll be able to make the playoffs for the next five years, guaranteed. The other one, last place, guaranteed, five years. Which way are you going? Oh, that's tough. Um, the uh, the fact that I have uh, a good Cubs team over the past few years and a bad Bears team over the last few years feels like I could just flip that just to change it up a little bit. But my heart is always with the Cubs, so I got to say I'll take the Cubs oh. in the playoffs. Interesting. I thought you were going to swing the pendulum there for a second. Nah, I'm, you see, being a Bears fan, you're just kind of used to it after a while. So it uh, it's not too big of a change. So <laughs> I'll take the uh, – but the Cubs were bad for 100 years. So right. it's kind of nice to see them good for a little while. Yeah, understandable. So today we're going to be talking about some players, some more preseason kind of hype going on a little bit here. Our first player is Mac Jones. We just got some new sleeper ADP today. In that ADP, Mac Jones was QB 26. Cam Newton was just released on August 31st and somewhat of a surprise move, but maybe not so surprising. You know, Mac Jones was playing very well in the preseason. Granted it being preseason, but he was playing quite well. We had that issue with Cam Newton and some misunderstanding of the COVID protocols, which may have affected his standing. Where are you at on uh, Mac Jones, Jake? Yeah, um, Mac was a guy that I was... I don't want to say I was low on him. I was low on him as a Bears fan just because I didn't think he would fit the offense well. He wasn't a guy that I was really looking for. But I have Mack at quarterback 20 um, from a dynasty perspective um, ahead of guys like uh, Matt Ryan, Danny Jones, uh, Sam Darnold. So just because of his youth, I do think the offensive scheme fits his skill set really well. Um, like you said, his preseason looked phenomenal. He was the highest graded rookie quarterback uh, via PFF. So, you know, I'm, I think that people underestimate what he – is able to do because of the team that he had around him. Um, he's never going to be a quarterback who's going to give you a ton of rushing upside, but I think he's going to have a solid enough floor to make that, you know, his his sleeper ADP to me kind of feels like a steal. Not really a, like a huge steal, but he's a guy where he's being drafted outside of a quarterback two, essentially. So, you know, in a super flex league, if, if you're able to get him at quarterback 26, and especially from, you know, Dynasty being a rookie coming in, it feels like it, he could easily outperform that ADP. Yeah, I agree with you. I have met QB 20 myself, and I think it's interesting. You mentioned that Mac doesn't really provide much running. I think that's just more his style. He's actually a better athlete than people give him credit for. Um, Skyler, what do you think about Mac? Yeah, I also have a QB 20, so I think that's a, it's a good spot for him. We'll have to see it. <laughs> yeah. But really, I think best case scenario from the play side you get with him is more of that early career Kirk Cousins when he came in and before he had a Dalvin Cook to really focus on the offense. He did a little more himself, a little more mm -hmm. spread the weapons around, and he had QB1 seasons, like three of them under his belt before he went to Minnesota. And even then, that's kind of the low end what you, you're hoping for Mac Jones, where he's still a QB2. So um, if you're getting him at QB26, I think that's an ex it's an excellent startup value. Now, that's likely because the ADP hasn't corrected enough I think if we had gone back and you had known that week one it was going to be Mac Jones, I think Mac Jones might have slid his way into the middle of the first round right after a guy like Zach Wilson in your rookie drafts, as opposed to falling to early in the second round. Um, kind of where I fall on Mac Jones is if you are not necessarily a believer, uh, I would be trying to capitalize on the week one starting position for him as right now i would be looking to try to trade and see if there's anyone who will pay up because really if you're just looking from 
a long-term perspective and you're just trying to get ROI in every asset that you you have and accumulate up that way to pick up you know players or picks if you use if you drafted Mac Jones you'll probably got him somewhere between the 111 and the 204 for super flex leagues and potentially you know late second maybe early third in your one quarterback leagues and if you can trade him now for more value than that if you if you don't need that help at QB which Similar to speeches we've given on Herbert in the past. If you're drafting 112, you probably are set at quarterback. You know, if if you can if you can trade him for assets that can help you right now in other positions or accrue uh, draft value off of what he's already given you, uh, I would go ahead and do it. And if you do believe in him, then good for you. You got him at a good price a couple months ago. Now, Scott, real quick, if you were to trade Mac Jones, if you had Mac Jones, you were to trade him. What would you be looking for, like picks wise? Yeah, picks wise, um, I mean, I'd want a first and a second at least um, at minimum for him. I mean, any quarterback that's starting really, I'm going to start my trade value at a first. So even maybe see if somebody can spread it out and they'll give you a 2022 20, and a 2023 20, first. Uh, really, this is only going to work if you have someone who's excited on him. If not, I'd look to maybe trade him down for a quarterback who might give you something similar this year, like a Derek Carr plus a first or a second if somebody's really out on that situation or Kirk Cousins similarly. Um, if I'm a win now team too, if you can trade if you can trade him for a guy like an Amari Cooper we're going to talk about later who's can slot into your flex, I, I might make that swap straight up. Because Mack will probably, I would assume this time next year you could see him going rounds five, six in your startups where there's a lot of where these flex or wide receiver twos get drafted. So. I like what you brought up about like Kirk Cousins or Derek Carr plus because like those are the kind of quarterbacks we hope that Mac Jones is going to be. So if you can just get that production now plus another asset, it seems pretty good. And they're, Maybe Jake, they're what gonna, would, they're what would you trade? You, those guys are going to uh. give you two or three more years as well. So let's keep that in mind. Yeah, Jake, what would you trade for Mac or yeah, take I mean, for Mac? I'm in the same boat as Skyler with a lot of this. I think, you know, with a starting quarterback, especially somebody like Mac, who has no competition on his team anymore. Cam was his only competition in that quarterback room, and he's gone. This is going to be a Mac season. He's going to get the whole year to to try and perform. I, they're not going to bench him for Jarrett Stidham at any point, if Stidham's even on the roster. I think technically, like, if you go to the Patriots website, Mac is the only quarterback listed on the roster. So, you know, I'm definitely looking for a first. I'm more of the – I typically try to prefer – targeting uh players more so than picks in addition to a first so i'd probably be looking more in that like kirk cousins Derek Carr range i'd even you know i i've seen a couple trades where you know mac plus has gone for you know people have added to mac to get an even you know an even higher tier quarterback i've seen mac plus a first for it was uh, mac plus a first for justin fields and kareem hunt so you know it was it was a, a big pay up and but it's a lot of you know balancing there um, but I think Mac, you know, is a guy who could return on the value and I'd feel comfortable if I was buying him. He's easily a guy I'd give up multiple firsts for. If he's not in your starting lineup, a trade I just saw happen in a league where essentially if you take out other pieces, somebody traded Mac Jones for like Deshaun Watson, which for me, if Jones is a guy who's going to sit your bench this year anyway, if you're a team that can afford it, right. I might take that gamble run out. If the Watson owner's looking to work something around those two guys, cause they're like, I need a quarterback now. And he still gives me a long-term upside. I'd talk to him. I'd see if you could get that done. Um, that's something that, you know, as opposed to waiting the year on Mac like you were thinking, you wait the year on Watson, it could make your team significantly better down the line. I'd probably prefer that to a future, to future picks anyway. Yeah. Now, moving on to another rookie QB, Justin Fields. Uh, last ADP dump, he was QB 16, which is a little low for me. Um, I don't know if people are a little bit scared because he's not actually the starter yet, but I think we can all agree that that's going to be happening sooner than sooner rather than later. And the sky is really the limit for Fields. He has all the tools. We kind of know that. That's the thing about him. I, I, I don't know what the issues really were. Like I've, all the issues we've heard, I think, you know, coming into this year as why Justin Fields fell and all that. I, I didn't ever really believed any of them. Skyler, what do you think about Fields? Yeah, first off, as far as for him getting in the lineup, I understand where people may be a little concerned because it is Matt Nagy, and I don't trust the guy as far as I can throw him. Uh, if you look over at the Patriots with Bill Belichick, he has the guts to look at his team and say, hey, I think the best thing for actually putting us in a position to grow or get better, even if we're not going to win immediately, is to put Mac Jones in the system that we drafted him to be in. Whereas 
I don't know what Chicago's doing because similarly, opposite styles of play. Like Andy Dalton's a much different quarterback to Justin Fields, and I don't know if it's as simple of a case as eh, if we're not doing well with Dalton, we'll put Fields in. And it's because they play different. I don't think it's like a hand of the torch, like handing off the torch. So right. I'm just not sure what they're gonna do, and you're never gonna really get that out of Matt Nagy until you force his hand or you actually see it happen because the guy thinks he's the smartest in the room and he wants you to know that. <laughs> so. So for Justin Fields, I understand that apprehension. But yeah, QB 16, I love that value if you can get him there. It's the cheapest you ever get him. Unfortunately for Justin Fields, I think his buying window was in May. I think it was before his landing spot, before you really knew where he was going. Uh, for now, his price is only going to climb. If, if you can make a trade to pick up Justin Fields below you know, an absorbent asking price, I, I, I try to make it happen. But unfortunately... I think you just have to may maybe wait to see if, if maybe if this creeps into week four, five, six, and Dalton's still there and the manager's getting impatient, maybe knock on his door and see how he's doing. But I have fields of QB10. Uh, I'm in a position where if I can afford it, I might move to a contending team with fields. If they get impatient, a guy like Aaron Rodgers, I might even send out to see. Because just the rushing upside is just, it's incredible with Justin Fields. And I, you, you, that's, it's tough to get. You know, Andy's got the arm talent to back it up. It's just whether or not he can piece those together or really fit with the team that's yet to be seen. But he has all the intangibles you want out of a fantasy quarterback. Yeah, Matt Nagy truly is a problem, I think, uh, in most of our eyes. And uh, it's almost unfortunate, like, Justin Fields might keep his job for him because if Justin Fields comes in and plays really well and he wins enough games, like, I mean, Matt Nagy might be hanging around for a little while longer. Uh, Jake, uh, I'm sure you've dealt with Nagy <laughs> plenty. What do, what do you think? Just a little bit. I think Skyler kind of hit the nail right on the head. I also have him at quarterback 10, so we're just all on the same page with these quarterbacks here. Um, but yeah, what I love about Fields, the player, is that he's a quarterback with elite speed, with elite rushing upside, who thinks to throw the ball first. He's not a he's not a panic runner like we see some, you know, some of these rushing QBs turn into, or he's not like a he's not a guy like Lamar, where there's Lamar, where there's questions with the arm or anything like that. Like we've seen every, that Justin Fields can make every throw that a football field needs him to make. I agree with Skyler too, that you're at probably the very end. The window is basically shut on, you know, a buy window for Justin Fields. And you're, you're kind of hoping that five, six weeks into the season, we, we see him not, you know, if he's not starting, then you can kind of reopen a buy window there. I think the problem with that though, is there's, if you listen to Matt Nagy's words, which as we all know, mean, less than a grain of salt he says we want to see dalton as a starter week one he really hasn't made a commitment to dalton past week one and plus with it being the rams and we know how good that defense can be there's a non-zero chance that we see dalton start week one against the rams just get absolutely destroyed and then we see justin fields fly into the lineup in week two and just take off from there so you know if, if you can get him for a reasonable price absolutely do it because like we, his ceiling is a top two or three quarterback in football like that, that is the legitimate ceiling for Justin Fields in my view of him. I own him in a lot of leagues and I'm one of those owners who's I, my asking price for him has been high and it's going to stay high. You're not going to get him off of somebody like me. You need to capitalize on somebody who drafted him to be a quarterback two in, in a super flex league. And now there's, you know, he's not starting week one. They have no other options on their bench that are really worth anything. Like those are the guys where you can maybe flip them for a little bit. You can, you know, offer a little bit less. Maybe, you know, you could pull off depending on how desperate they get a, you're talking like a, you know, a Kirk Cousins plus a first or a Carson Wentz plus a first. And you can, you know, that's a steal. If you can get Justin Fields for that, you're probably looking at multiple first plus. But even then, I think that's worth it. Like if you're a non-competing team, if you're like a middle of the road team and you're, you're contemplating a rebuild, I'd be, you know, targeting Justin Fields as a quarterback that you can build around. Yeah, and if, yeah. You, if, you own oh, ahead, Justin, if you own Justin Fields, it's also not really a selling window either. Like, yeah. He's just in a position where uh, what you had to pay to get him in draft capital, I mean, you took him in the, one of the first five picks of your rookie draft. Yep. And there's... <laughs> uh, it, before we see him play games, you really get to see that upside. Like, no one's, no one's going to be paying that... Like, no one's going to be paying what I think you possibly could get for him as a right. top 10 quarterback i think the second he's starting and he's playing just the style of player he is he's going to be a top 10 quarterback in fantasy right away like I, I think the second he gets in there just the rushing upside even if the bears aren't winning whatever longevity maybe isn't the best quarterback i think the second he gets in he's putting up absurd amount of fantasy points um yeah 
Yeah, if I'm a fields owner, I'm I'm not trading him unless I'm getting an overpay at this point because, yep. like we said, like his value is probably at its low point right now, and it's probably only going to go up. You know, I his ceiling truly is elite. I, he, he, his play style kind of reminds me of Russell Wilson in a way that mm-hmm. he can run if he wants to, but he, as Jake mentioned, he's not looking to do it. He it he's kind of his his option when the the play isn't there, and he can do it very easily. Um, I have him at QB 12, so I'm behind you guys, but still ahead of ADP. Not quite with you with you guys, but big Justin Fields fan. Yeah, I think the Russ comparison makes a lot of sense. I also, I see a lot of Deshaun Watson, the same kind of playmaking ability where it's, you know, the arm, I think he has a little bit of a better arm than Russ um, in, in sense of a pure arm strength capacity. Russ obviously can, we, we've seen Russ. He's, he's not struggling by any means. Um, but, you know, that's, Deshaun Watson was kind of my comparison for him coming out. And that's, that. Deshaun Watson pre all of this stuff value is, I think, what you should be getting in return for Fields. Just a little bit of the more of the size as well. For, yeah, uh, yeah. Deshaun Watson. Just a just a little bit. And uh, <laughs> I mean, the thing with Justin Fields right now is like he 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 had been sliding up into like the third round of startup drafts towards the end of things, and even now, I'm, so if you're having a draft today or tomorrow, he's probably going even in the second round, and I don't think it ever gets cheaper than that. So it's just yeah. something to keep in mind. If he is a player you're drafting, he's there in like the third or fourth round. We're always looking for these guys with the return on your investment. And he's a guy, I think that's going to be creeping into the back end of the first round or top of the second round inside of Jeff's next year. So for your contemplating rebuild type teams, he's absolutely a guy. If there's any way to get him on your squad, go for it. Moving on to a veteran this time, Amari Cooper, who was wide receiver 15 in the last latest ADP dump, somehow still only 27 years old, which is kind of amazing for as long as he's been in the NFL. Um, I believe he is still the wide receiver one in Dallas for at least this season. I know that CD Lamb is the brand new toy. He's the ascending player. I'm still on Amari Cooper being that guy right now. Jake, where are you? Yeah, I'm in the same boat with you. I think CD Lamb is a special player, but I think it's hard to ignore the whole of what Amari Cooper has done and what he's still capable to do. Um, you know, we hear it all the time. He, he came to camp looking like he's in the best shape of his life, but we're talking about a guy who I think is kind of perpetually undervalued. You know, he had the outlier season in 2017, but besides that, he's essentially your Mike Evans. He's a very consistent player. He's putting up a thousand yards pretty much every single year. He hasn't gotten in the end zone as much as Evans has the last few years, but we're talking about a guy like the offense runs through him and not in the same sense that, you know, other players teams run offense runs through them, but like Amari Cooper and Dak have a really unique connection. I think like, it's very clear to see when you watch them play, like there's a reason that Cooper and Dak were putting up insane numbers last year. Yes. The defense was horrible and they're throwing a ton, but they Dak knows where Cooper's going to be. It seems like an uncanny amount. It seems like he just is going to continue to feed, um, feed Amari in this offense. And while Lamb is super talented, I think Lamb is the future. Cooper is the right now in that offense. I have him as wide receiver 15. Um, so I think right at round or at ADP. Yeah, at ADP. Um, and I think that's that's a fair value to pay for him. You know, that's arguably his floor at this point, in my opinion. Yeah, and CeeDee Lamb is going as wide receiver 14 right ahead of Cooper currently. I do have CeeDee Lamb higher myself. Uh, but, you know, last year when Dak was healthy, Mari Cooper was the wide receiver one in football during that stretch. Skyler, where are you? Yeah, I actually have both of those receivers higher than ADP. Um, I think they're both being undervalued. You talk about Amari Cooper being a guy who's undervalued every single year. Yeah, the outlier season in 2017, he was a little banged up. He only played 14 games that year. The guy has so many misconceptions tied to his name. Now, I think he's devalued because of the ascension of CD Lamb. I think there's a health stigma around him. I think there's a he's not an alpha stigma around him. And then like there's this public perception around Amari Cooper based off what he has done in weeks where people are actually paying attention. I call that the the week fifteen devaluation for Amari Cooper. In week in week fifteens, which is in your playoff matchups, when you really are counting on the most, and because he's been so solid, there's been a lot of playoff teams who rostered Amari Cooper and we're obviously going to play him in the last five seasons he has averaged 3.5 points in a week 15 matchup he's had 2.3 2.9 8.3 0 and 3.8 now that sticks with you managers remember that they're like I can't trust Amari Cooper I can't this that they they they, they want to lean somewhere else and um 
it's just not. I mean, like you gotta think, you gotta think more than that. But that really does stick with people. They get snake bit, and he's one of those guys that people just don't ever seem to really want. And where he's going in these drafts, which is always about back of round five in your startups right now for super flex, he's just a guy I've, I'm always comfortable taking redrafts. Um, dynasty like every time he's on there and he's like the next wide receiver on my list because i have him slightly higher than adp i'm just always comfortable taking amari cooper um i think they can both <laughs> thrive in this offense because those four weeks with dak i know the defense maybe is going to be a little improved you talk about how he was the wide receiver one at that point even on a season long the pace cd lamb during that stretch was would have been the wide receiver 10 on the season so it's not like they can't both eat. When people are like, well, if, if Lamb's going to suddenly become a top 10 wide receiver, Amari Cooper can't be around top 10. Like, he absolutely he absolutely can. Like, him going at wide receiver 15, like, I think even if CeeDee Lamb jumps into the top 10, why, why isn't Amari Cooper going to be sitting around 15? Like, there's no reason they can't both be there. We've seen it before. Um you know, when you look at style of play, it's kind of like with the Rams where you have Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, and Matthew Safford, I just think all three players are better. I think I think Amari Cooper is a better talent than Robert Woods. I think CeeDee Lamb is a better talent than Cooper Cup. And I think uh, Dak Prescott is a better quarterback than Matthew Safford. So really, you just have that offer. Everyone loves and is confident with the, the group there in LA. I think it's just an even better version of that. And both i'm confident taking both in every single format and amari cooper's yeah, always healthy like he's only missed three games in his career so the health segment doesn't make a ton of sense to me either yeah i mean i don't see why they won't be producing together for years to come really i mean the only real argument i think you could like have against amari cooper as a player is there have been times when he's failed to show up against the best corners in the league sometimes he'll have a week off where he just doesn't perform against the top competition but he's still performing the rest and, and he's still performing the rest of the season. You know, players have off weeks that happens. Like, when, no one's expected to be consistent every single week. When you look at the weekly consistency of wide receivers, it's not as consistent as people think it is. Like, yep, right. people are like, oh, well, he had this one down week or, like, three down weeks in the season. It's like, look at the scape of the league for wide receivers. Like, if you're, if you're not having some variance week to week, then you're elite. Then you're Devontae Adams. And even Devontae Adams will have one or two weeks a year where he might – he might go a little quiet. It's just the nature of wide receivers. Wasn't it Stefan Diggs was the only wide receiver last year to have 10 PPR points in every single week? I believe it was. I, could, I think so. I, I could believe that. Yeah, so I mean, like, it's just the way it is. That's the nature of the wide receiver it's position. An, it's an overblown narrative, which I think is, there's, like, so many narratives behind Amari Cooper that are all negative, and that's why he's de- he's always devalued, and I eat up that value if you can. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like we're, what you're saying with the weekly inconsistency, like we're talking about Calvin Ridley had a game last year where I think he scored zero points. DK Metcalf got shut down against Jalen Ramsey. Like we've see, we have see these elite wide receivers who are consistently going in the top seven, eight wide receivers. They're getting shut down too. So even the elite of the elite, some of the guys that we are considering some of the best players have some of this weekly inconsistency. Plus what you're talking about with Amari Cooper, like last year he was still pretty – decently consistent even after you know Dak was out obviously he wasn't getting you know 13 targets a week anymore but that's you know a arguably unsustainable pace anyway so even if that comes down to earth if you get all three of those healthy like you're talking about with them being similar to the Rams and kind of you know that makeup there it's the Rams with a terrible defense so they're going to be throwing <laughs> the ball a lot more they're going to be coming from behind a lot more if you have teams that are comfortable drafting Robert Woods and Cooper Cup not too far behind these guys, why not take the guys who are looking to be in line for more value? Like, it just doesn't make sense to me that people want to knock where their ADP is. Absolutely. I think that's going to about wrap it up for today's show. But before we go, Jake, is there anything you would like to plug? Yeah, thank you guys for having me again. Um, I do host two other podcasts. Uh, one is recording its first episode this week. That is the personnel uh, personnel package. Um, we're going to be a combination of real life football analysis mixed with a little bit of fantasy stuff. So make sure you check that out. If you're looking for more real life, just kind of random for fun content, I do run another podcast called Two Average Husbands. You can find us on uh, iTunes and Spotify with the name spelled out on social media. It's number two ABG Husbands. Um, there we uh, just have a few drinks and talk about literally anything so make sure you come and check those out as well yes thank you again for joining us i'm sure it will not be the last time that we see your face everybody make sure 
to keep your eyes out for Jake's sleeper articles coming out on Fridays. As for me and Skylar, you can find us on Twitter. Skylar's at VFF Buffalo. I'm at YB underscore FF. You can find all of our content at JWBFantasyFootball.com. Make sure to go follow and subscribe everywhere. We're on all the platforms. Doing so will help us continue to grow and build and provide even better content for all of you. Other than that, we'll see you next time.